Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Gwen. Uh, so let's start this, um, this session uh, on, the, um, on the main uh, services um, of uh, Open Air provide. Uh, so a session um, dedicated uh, to uh, the services that we have uh, available and all the interact interactions we have with um, uh, our content providers, um, repositories, um, open access journals, uh, CRI systems, data repositories, data archives. So those that are managing uh, um, these um, repositories, these different systems that are providing content to, to open air. So this, the main objective is in fact to discuss some of the, um, the services available uh, to um, discuss with you and to present you uh, the latest updates on, on, on our graph, on our provide dashboard, on our interoperability guidelines uh, to highlight some use cases uh, from the, the graph and the way that uh, uh, content providers can consume uh, the, the data from our graph, um, the way that um, users and users, repository managers are um, using our provide functionalities, uh, services, and um, the way that uh, the community is uh, following uh, the, our interoperability uh, guidelines and participating, actively participating uh, in uh, contributing to the development of um, the open air guidelines. So um, it's, it's important to say that uh, um, we present and we discuss all the services around provide uh, in a completely open and transparent way. We are, we are trying to improve uh, the way that we engage with, uh, with uh, our users and uh, that we receive uh, feedback. So uh, just before we start, uh, I would like to uh, invite you all uh, to those that are not aware of these community calls that you join our community calls. So every month, every first Wednesday of the month, we have community calls. Uh, we realize that this is the right way to go uh, with um, to welcome your feedback, to have a more... Um, uh, participatory way of welcome your your uh, your ideas about our services. So be aware, be aware of these community calls. Uh, we try to have it, them all every month. Uh, open um, for discussions. We always have a specific topic to be discussed, but uh, we have uh, ten, plenty of time to 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 discuss other other issues. To, um, to clarify some doubts about the services, um, uh, about the infrastructure, etc. So be aware of that. You have here in front of you the, um, the specific dates of the upcoming uh, calls in the first Wednesday of each month. Uh, be aware, it's always at uh, half past two um, Central European time. Uh, and we hope that you can join in the in, in the coming. Uh, and also be aware that we have um, a monthly newsletter dedicated to content providers. So if you are an open air content provider, or if you are someone interested in the the provide services guidelines, broker events, uses user statistics, um, the validator, etc. So um, subscribe this newsletter because we will we always try to send three four uh, news items every every newsletter um, uh, and this newsletter is published every month just before the community call so by the first monday or tuesday of the month expect in your uh, mailbox um, the open air content providers newsletter so um, so i have already give these two invitations for our newsletter and for the community call. So let's go to our session. Thank you for very much for the, the speakers that we have uh, today. Um, 
Uh, in fact, our initial idea was to have more uh, use cases. Uh, I, I will highlight some of the use cases that, in fact, they were already presented in several community calls. But we have um, a mix of um, use cases and people from open air presenting the services. Uh, we have um, seven um, speakers uh, uh, organized in three blocks. For each of these blocks, we have a specific moment for questions and answers, okay? The first block is re uh, related with our research graph and the way that content providers can use uh, and, and consume the data from our graph and, um, and the way that we are generating added value services uh, from our um, research graph. Claudio Azzori from CNRST, uh, uh, from the Open Air technical team, will um, present Open Air Research Graph in the broker service. The power of the Open Air Research Graph into in practice. It's important to say that now we have um, uh, in production uh, a relevant uh, resource, so more than 100 million records available uh in in our in, in production from from our research graph so it's important to have this idea and cloud we will present um this uh, the services the added value services that we can build uh, relying on this graph and then a specific uh use case from la referencia from the latin america network of repositories uh, by lontaro matas so thank you claudio and lontaro for this for the, we will have it in the first part and for this first part, we will have questions and answers. So let's say that we have half an hour for each uh, block, and uh, for each block, uh, we have questions and answers. The second one is about the specific functionalities and services of Provide. I will do a presentation of the different dashboard services, and then we will uh, have a, a kind of Zoom for a specific service uh, that is being um, updated and 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 um, and improve it in the recent months the, the user statistics the user count service that Dimitris Pierakos uh, from Athena Research Center that is part of our um, technical team also responsible to manage this service will detail uh, and then the, the third block and for this we will have also question and answer for for the third block uh, it's dedicated to the to our guidelines um, our colleague from Bielefeld University, Andreas, will um, detail the recent um, uh, updates uh, regarding the the, um, the different uh, the, the set of guidelines that we have available for our community, and then uh, two use cases uh, from uh, the perspective of the the, the literature, um, the publications guidelines, and the. Uh, uh, we will have our colleagues from, from Canada, uh, Canada Research Open Air Compliant Canadian Aggregator, a, a, a perspective from a, a, a national aggregator um, compatible with the Open Air Guidelines, and um, Jan Drovrak from Charles University from Czech Republic uh, will um, give us some important uh, um, novelties about the the crease uh, the crease um, guidelines um, so let's start first with um, the open air research graph claudio the floor the floor is yours be aware that for it for each of this block we have questions and answers uh, of course we can also have it in, at the end but if you have something relevant to ask about the broker the research graph and the specific use case that Lontar will present, so we will have time at the end of this first block. So I will stop my um, screen and give the floor to Claudio. All right, thank you, Pedro. Let me share my screen, okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, I don't see your uh, camera, but okay, no problem. Oh, right, here I am, hello. I like, I, I like to see beautiful faces. <laughs> 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 so thank you for the introduction, Pedro. Um, with this uh, brief presentation, I'm going to um, give an overview of what uh, the open air research graph is and how uh, in open air we are exploiting it to uh, build uh, another value service like the broker service on top of the information uh, in the graph. 
So um, let's start by uh, defining what uh, we mean essentially by uh, graph. Uh, we define it as an open metadata research graph of interlinked scientific products with access right information linked to funding information and research communities. This is the declination that we did uh, in open air to uh, the graph of information that uh, is aggregated by open air. General, generally speaking, a graph is a model to represent information. You can think about uh, the Facebook graph with uh, people as dots and relationship between people like friendship as the edges connecting uh, the dots. In open air, we apply the same concept to uh, the scientific knowledge in order to uh, have the possibility to navigate from the dots in this graph. In fact, as you can see in the picture here, research products can uh, are associated to uh, the research projects that funded them that are instead linked to uh, the funder entity. So uh, following this relationship, you can get, get a given perspective about, the, for example, the expenditure for scientific uh, production, let's say. Oops. Sorry, oh, I changed it. Here, present, present view. Here we are again. Okay. So, um, more information about uh, the open air graph is now available at the newly uh, launched website graph.openair.eu. So uh, if you want to know more about uh, what I'm telling you <laughs> in this moment, uh, you can find more information there as a lot of resources have been uh, introduced there to uh, better describe what uh, the open air research graph is. Uh, so all begins with uh, Acquire acquisition of metadata about uh, scientific products. So, at, as today, uh, we uh, Open Air has more than 12k sources spread around, around all the world, uh, with uh, be, um, interaction with many many uh, actors that uh, you might know, and initiatives, scholarly communication initiatives that are available out there. Um, so. The kind of information acquired in the graph is not limited only to articles, but spans also uh, to, uh, let's say, new type of uh, products like software that are emerging in uh, the movement of open science and the evaluation of science itself. So data sets are becoming more and more prominent, just like research software. So this is why you have also GitHub here in uh, this slide. Another very important concept to keep in mind on the way open air builds uh, this uh, research graph is the role of uh, entity registries, which uh, we define as a particular type of data sources that offer uh, authoritative list of entities. Among these, we can mention uh, registries for researchers like ORCID that deliver a non-ambiguous identity for in this case, the a person that is a, a researcher. Then we have registries for organizations like grid.ac and of course, Cordis, our uh, main provider for, um, and the first provider actually for uh, project in, uh, information and uh, the relative funding stream. Then we have registries for projects, again, Cordis plus, uh, several funders scattered around Europe, but not only to limited to Europe. And uh, last but not least, registries for uh, data sources like uh, Open Door, R3 Data, DOIJ, uh, for the journalist and, and the publishers. So the concept is that from this uh, particular type of data sources, Open Air acquires uh, information that is non-ambiguously uh, identified and uh, the identification of 
the identity, as we, as we can uh, shall see in next slides, is going to be a central point in uh, the construction of the graph. So uh, the story begins with uh, the aggregation of this metadata information from a different from different sets of uh, data source typologies. With uh, I can say the most uh, common one are uh, repositories delivering uh, metadata information via uh, OAIPMH protocol. Uh, my colleague Andreas later uh, is going to uh, give you more information about. Uh, this particular type of data collection. And uh, thanks to the role of the OpenR guidelines, I would say the uh, integration activity for this type of sources allows to have uh, now thousands actually of uh, sources of this typology because uh, they follow the rules expressed in the OpenR guidelines. Then in the slide, there is another block below where uh, other type of sources like ORCID, I'm Paywall, Crossref, and Microsoft Academic, not following uh, the open -air guidelines are instead aggregated uh, differently, but allowing to build a quite comprehensive set of scholarly communication data. As you can see the numbers here uh, far uh, beyond the 100 million uh, records are uh, ingested in the system, forming uh, what we call the uh, raw open air research graph. Raw because it's not yet processed or enriched. Then uh, the supply chain uh, that is applied to uh, the graph assumes to uh, look for multiple instances of the same uh, research product, uh, publications, software, data sets, and other kind of research products. For example, uh, the preprint could be uh, acquired by a given repository and the postprint by the journal. So the goal for uh, this process is to identify them as uh, the same object because we don't want to count them twice in statistics and uh, we don't want to uh, see it appearing uh, more than once when a user issues a search on, uh, for example, the Explore portal. Then, thanks to full text mining algorithms and a set of different kind of enrichments that we perform, added value, let's say, is added to the graph. This added value lies in uh, giving more uniformity trying to map different terms that can be expressed in different way, for example, to state um, the language of in which a publication is written. Different repositories might express this concept in different ways. So an important role uh, here is uh, to apply uh, mapping transformation text to thanks to controlled vocabularies. Finally, uh, this step builds uh, the final representation of the graph that is uh, finally pushed to the backends serving our public services uh, like uh, Open Air Monitor, Explore, Connect, and uh, the API through Develop. As you can see, the amount of services that uh, can be built on top of the graph uh, is uh, quite important. Uh, so. The graph in this sense plays a really a central role in uh, uh, many of the things we do in, in open air. So uh, from uh, the next slide on, we are focusing only on the uh, broker service that is part of the open air provide dashboard. Uh, so the main concept be, uh, behind the broker is to give back this uh, added value, this uniformity of information uh, and uh, enrichment to uh, repositories that uh, provided this information in the first place. So the added value uh, built uh, along the open air supply chain uh, is going to be uh, given back to uh, the original repositories to enrich uh, their original collections. So um, 
the purpose is to allow repository managers on the provide dashboard to uh, evaluate the uh, quality of the kind of enrichments that OpenAir can build for them and subscribe if they are interested. So this uh, flow of actions is well seeped, uh, deceived in this slide where thanks to algorithms that I'm going to illustrate briefly in the next slide, identify the events that are presented to users uh, up to the top 100 uh, events as a preview to the user. Then uh, a user can create a subscription once he found that uh, given type of enrichment suites uh, some lack of information in their collection. Then periodically uh, subscriptions are matched against uh, the events that are produced, uh, that can be produced for the graph to form uh, what we call notifications. These notifications represent the actual uh, enrichments that the broker can deliver back to uh, repository managers. And this can be uh, explored in two ways. On one side, on the content provider dashboard, and can be, for the moment, on, we are uh, testing the realization of the public API for the broker in uh, the beta environment. So to consume uh, notification uh, programmatically. So to enable automatic integration of this out added value information back in uh, into the repository collections. Uh, so how does the algorithm to identify this uh, added value works? This algorithm um, can be uh, well exemplified by uh, this example. The concept lies on the fact that uh, we run the application. So uh, the algorithm is based on the analysis of the groups of duplicates objects. So uh, the procedure can be well exemplified by an example. Let's say that uh, record A coming from repository RDA is a duplicate of a record B from another repository. Let's assume that um, A provides a, a, an abstract while uh, record B does not has an abstract then the algorithm can produce an event potentially interesting for the other repository. And the same criteria can be basically applied for uh, other metadata fields. Might they be uh, authoritatively provided by uh, other repositories or uh, inferred by uh, the mining algorithms implemented uh, in the open air supply chain. Um, it's important to note that uh, since events are produced by algorithms that take decision uh, based on non-authoritative uh, information, it's crucial uh, that uh, for transparency, this level of uncertainty is uh, made available to the end users. So this is why in um, the content provider dashboard, when uh, exploring the uh, events, there are some sliders that allow users to filter also by a concept of trust that maps what uh, we can synthesize as the confidence level uh, produced by the mining algorithms or uh, the authoritativeness level uh, being a higher value more near to uh, one as the, when the information is uh, provided by a repository. Um, enrichments events are presented in uh, the content provider dashboard and are modeled inside uh, the broker as two main categories. Uh, enrichments of more information that uh, was recognized as already being available in, uh, in a repository collections, like here's another persistent identifier for uh, this publication, or missing information. This publication did not have any persistent ID, so here uh, a DOI. There are different categories of uh, enrichments, we call them topics, that touches upon uh, different uh, metadata fields like the abstract, the publication date, links to projects, subject classifications uh, obeying to uh, different known taxonomies, uh, open access versions, so uh, URLs, links to the open access version of a scientific product, 
persistent IDs, ORCID. And uh, we are still evaluating uh, the quality levels of other type of events like links between uh, literature and data sets, links to software and links to other publications. Uh, just to show some numbers produced some time ago, these were uh, the amount of events built for uh, the different kind of topics for uh, yeah at the, back, back then they were for something like 700 repositories that were available uh, in production and uh, this concludes my presentation okay thank you very much um, so you can put you can ask questions here in the um, Q&A or in in the chat if you want um, but let's move to the to the second presentation of this first block to have here the la referencia uh, use case and then you, you can discuss a bit more about this first part of this value of the open air research graph for uh, content providers Okay, Lontaro, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Pedro. Thank you all for the opportunity to present. I want to briefly present what we are doing in collaboration with Open Air to consume the services that they are generating. Uh, as you know, Open, um, the Referencia is an aggregator. It's, it's not a repository. Um, it's a content provider for, for, the, for Open Air. Uh, we uh, open our harvest more than 2 million records of Latin American repositories through the referencia. So this use case is different from the ones uh, from, from most of the, of the, of the cases of, of open air because we are aggregate, an aggregator of aggregators because uh, we harvest actually the national nodes uh, of, of la referencia. So, uh, First, I want to talk about uh, what are the ways for, uh, that we are developing to, to consume the service that Open Air is providing. The collection of our referencia is part of the, of the, of the records that, that fits the graph. So we have a, a lot of, of, uh, of information that, uh, in the graph that, the, the, that this is covered for, by the process of the graph. So uh, we develop an, uh, a, a repository dashboard for national nodes and uh, our referencia repositories because they are not a part of the direct, direct part of the of the uh, open air provide. So we develop uh, a repository dashboard in order to present services of La referencia and also consume. Uh, the services provided by Open Air. This is the way that we the, that we think that is better to 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 connect the two initiatives. Um, another integration that we are experimenting is to consume the Open Air Graph AIP uh, from our uh, search uh, site uh, from from our provide site. Uh, in order to present additional information about the records of La Referencia to the final users. So uh, we are going to, this is a beta version, it's a prototype, but it's not a beta version, it's a prototype, but uh, we are going to present additional information provided by the open air through the, the, to, to the graph, uh, through the graph AIP uh, directly to the final users. So they will see the, the data, the metadata from their uh, regional repositories, but also how uh, that metadata was enriched and, um, and connected to other providers uh, by Open Air Graph. Um, one thing that one also want to show is how uh, the impact of the, of the of the graph uh, in the referential collection in the Open Air Explorer. 
because <clears throat> we did some work uh, with uh, um, Open Earth team to improve the way that uh, the La Referencia collection is displayed in the in Explorer. Before this work, uh, La Referencia uh, collection was always uh, perceived as, a, as, as, a, as one thing without this widening between repositories. Uh, after this, after this, this work, uh, now you, you can note that this, this part, La Referencia, is the only uh, um, organization mentioned here. But uh, now, after the improvement of the Open Air Explorer uh, interface, but also uh, thank, uh, by the work that we've done um, about uh, providing providing some extra information in the in the records, uh, individual repositories are being identified and, and presented in the Open Air Explorer. Uh, as, as I said, the reference is a regional repository network. We harvest national nodes that harvest repositories. So uh, before this work, Open Air harvested uh, and processed La Referencia as a monolithic uh, collection. So we did some work with the, with the Open Air team in order to improve the way that the information uh, was traced. Uh, we did a campaign in the regional repositories in Latin America uh, to register in, in, in Open Door. That is the way that Open Air used to, to one of the ways that Open Air used to, to identify individual repositories. And then we improved the, the data of the, of the records to, to put uh, the Open Door ID in each record, in each with the data record. Then Open Air team worked in, the, in their pipeline and the uh, harvesting process to, to discover this information and put it in the, in the, in the process. So now, uh, as a result, individual repositories are identified and displayed and, and use it as, as individual sources uh, in, in, the, in the graph. So we think that it, it was a very uh, important uh, step in the collaboration between La between Referencia and Open Air. So the next step is to uh, better integrate the broker IP in the, in the La Referencia repository dashboard in order to deliver uh, the events that Claudio uh, showed directly to, 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 to the Latin American repositories behind La Referencia. And beyond the, the Open Air advanced project that is going to end, uh, La Referencia, Evict, and Cener, uh, are, we are exploring uh, ways to, to, to use the, the outcomes of the graph uh, to, to integrate uh, that information into our software, uh, because we are go working in, in metadata enrichment and link it with Chris and national system in our region. So, we think that the opportunity that gives the graph and the service that Open Air, Open Air uh, is developing is, is important for the other regions. Also, uh, we need to find a ways to collaborate and integrate information, not only as a providers, but also as a users, or even uh, uh, to, to, to deliver better service to the end users. So thank you, that's all for my part. Thank you very much. Um, so if you want to join also, uh, Claudio, um, feel free to join this, uh, also to connect your, um, your camera and audio. Um, let me check if there is uh, questions here. Um, I will also share screen. And check in the chat. So Kathleen, Kathleen, uh, Kathleen is asking. Um, um, so thanks for the great and very clear presentation about what it is. Open air graph, very helpful. 
As you know, it, it is quite an effort for repositories to adopt the guidelines version 4, and if repositories don't adopt the guidelines, their content will likely still be included in the open air graph via other data providers. Can you explain what are the specific benefits for repositories to adopt the open air guidelines? Well, uh, I believe the idea is to reduce uh, the effort also for others to integrate the information. Um, unless we want to let others do uh, and become the, stand, the de facto standard. Uh, I think this is the main uh, drawback, let's say. Uh, adopting the open air guideline will surely uh, provide an added value for us, the open meaning the open air team, because the effort for us to uh, integrate that information will be lower. Um, but then agreeing uh, on an open uh, standard for uh, metadata exchange is an added value, not only for few, but for uh, a broader audience, let's say. So it's uh, for, for the benefit of many, that is good to adopt uh, open air guidelines. Yeah, uh, thank you, Claudia. O of course, uh, and, and 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 for sure, uh, Kathleen knows as so well as 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 we, uh, because contributing to um, being compatible with the, the open air guidelines will also provide the possibility to align uh, at other levels, like also at a um, uh, national level, uh, contributing also to some kind of national infrastructure that there are in place. And align also with other kinds of services and benefit from from them, from that. Uh, but but for sure, uh, Claudio, maybe, maybe we can highlight uh, some examples that um, aligning with, uh, for example, the, the 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 last version of the um, of the literature publications guidelines uh, will provide us uh, information. Uh, that we um, don't have from by other means, like uh, things like uh, author IDs, this kind, this kind of um, enriched uh, content that is quite important for uh, the open air infrastructure and also to open air to offer added value services on top of this better quality, uh, the, the better metadata quality, uh, let's say. Okay. Uh, well, and uh, can I jump in? Oh, sure. Uh, I was about to ask if some from your team could reply. <laughs> <laughs> so, Andreas. Um, Andreas speaking. And, um, and the good thing is uh, to um, have one of the uh, FAIR principles. So if the metadata are uh, has a high quality, like um, with uh, access rights and licenses and so on. So it's better to find and to um, reuse by other uh, researchers. So I would like to give the objectives in the in my talk yeah. later. Claudia, could, can you please share the, the, the one of your last slides? Um, um, Steffi is asking here, please display oh, the slide sure. again with the steps sure. for setting up using the, the, the open air graph with code, etc. I think it's this one present. Was it this one? The different phases? I think so. This is the one before just the next steps, yes. The slide before the next steps, could you? The supply chain. I don't have a slide in the next steps. No, no. Near, near the end? Yes. This one with a new type of events. Let's wait for a reaction. As I don't have your slides yet, because I try to, <laughs> I don't know, I cannot help. Uh, but uh, let's see, Steffi. Could you go to move just to the, to the one of the last slides? Well, 
the second last. This is the one before the thank you. Yes, maybe you can ask the question uh, and uh, we should have shared the slides before. We, we will share the link here in the, in the chat uh, quickly. Um, If you have any other questions, please uh, ask. Um, I see some comments here in the... Um, Steffi, the, the one after this is the the last slide. So maybe, can you ask the question? So I, I'm not sure if you... Um, can you, so after this slide, uh, it's, it's the last one, no, uh, Claudio? Indeed, yes. So maybe we can address your question, Sefi, after. <coughs> I'm not sure if uh, what, what you want. Just ask here what you want to know better. Uh, maybe we can explain uh, with the code, etc. With the code, a uh, slide with the code. Uh, don't know, I'm not sure. So here we have the, the, um, the different events that we have that we, we have. <coughs> okay, we will we will share the slide in the coming in the coming meetings here in the in the link and then we can we can address um, the question once again. For sure we will not um, avoid to to answer your, your question. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so let's 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 um, proceed with um, this discussion, um, and we will check once again the the, the question and answers. And um, let's let's now just move to the second uh, block. Uh, so uh, about the the provide where we uh, I will highlight some of the services and then. Uh, mm, my colleague Dimitris will talk about the user's count service. Uh, very briefly, uh, the, what we have uh, in this dashboard and um, highlight some, some use cases recently pre presented in some of the community calls. Um, usually I like to, to associate this image to, to, the, to the dashboard, to the provide dashboard. I already used a different uh, kinds of images and different kinds of graphics. But uh, I always like to use this image because this is uh, something that, uh, of, of course, uh, it can be also an image where we are playing with different services and functionalities, but that this is what we really want to, to have. So it's that we, as a community, we are pushing ourselves to, um, to have the different um, um, kinds of services contribu contributing to this global open research community uh, becoming more uh, powerful um, and this is something that uh, provide service can 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 in fact provide via the process of validation via a process of en enrichment and uh, uh, the open air um, provide dashboard is in fact this services um, this service where all the kind of content providers can interact with um, with open air and become part of this global community, but also uh, we want to have uh, provide uh, as the gateway to the European Open Science Cloud. And in order for some of these content providers actively participate and be part of the European Open Science Cloud, uh, they need to be part of uh, open air infrastructure. They need to become content providers of open air infrastructure and uh, contribute uh, by this mean to the and be part of to contribute and to be part of the European Open Science Cloud. Different uh, components, different functionalities in in provide. Uh, um, so we have the um, an area to validate, to register, to to uh, to check metrics, um, to measure, and to enrich. Uh, validate is uh, the services related with the, the validator, the the metadata validator that we have to check compliance against our guidelines, a process of registration that we align with other um, authoritative directories uh, like re 3 data uh, and uh, uh, user statistics where we 
uh, check and will provide uh, information about um, uh, metrics uh, from uh, the content providers and the broker events uh, and the broker uh, content uh, that is uh, that Claudio have already presented available in a part of in a component related with the, the content enrichment uh, it's important to say that the the current the um, uh, the version that we have currently available in production is uh, the second version of this uh, of this service um, we 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 did an update last May um, we prepared during uh, several months, uh, relying on relevant contributions from the community. And um, the first version was presented and delivered in uh, in October, September, October 2018. Then we did slightly uh, improvements, but then we uh, delivered a new version with a completely different uh, layout uh, in 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 April May uh, this year. Um, so, the, just some highlights uh, about the, the main uh, functionalities and services available. The one related with the validator is, in fact, uh, where people can um, run compliance tests against our uh, the different guidelines that we have available for literature repositories, for journals, for data repositories, and for CRI systems. Um, uh, this is a, a relevant service in order to, to people to check uh, the quality of the metadata, the, to, to receive a kind of a report with the feedback and uh, to check where they need to improve. Um, this is important to do when we want to register for the first time, but it's also impro important to do when we want to improve the, um, the version, the level of, of, of compatibility that we have in our data source. Uh, so we can also uh, test and, and run different tests um, in the in our validator. Uh, so we have this available for this main kind of types of uh, data sources. Registered is also associated to the validator, of course, because when someone wants to register, uh, we also run validations. But the the, the registered um, functionality is just for those that are for the first time. To be part of open air and to and 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 to register their their content provider in, in in our infrastructure and we have automatic service available for um, publication repositories for data archives for journals and for aggregators um, of course for literature and for data repositories we are relying on a, we have uh, we are relying on, on an authoritative directory um, open door for literature repositories and uh, retrieve data for data repository. So uh, a new data source needs to be in this directory, uh, and then they can register it in open air um, and, 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 and and comply with our guidelines. Uh, we expect uh, we are preparing new automatic process of registrations also for CRI systems that uh, it should be already available. It's not yet. The, the, the testing of the guidelines is already available, but the, the, the automatic process of res registration is not available yet. But for, for those that have um, a CRIS system and that want to be part of, of Open Air, of course, they can contact it, contact us by the help desk or by the other means that we, we have, uh, and we will initiate the process of registration. What we don't have available is just the automatic process inside the provide. And we hope to have um, different types of, uh, um, of, of, of of repositories and, uh, and, and systems also uh, available soon as we also have uh, we propose also guidelines for uh, software uh, registries software repositories uh, and uh, of course we deal with different realities we have a kind of uh, repositories that are that are a kind of hybrid repositories catch all repositories where the where we have all types of contents in, in the repositories and we need to find good ways to to um, to process the, the registration in open air so soon we will have it but it's important to say also that under this umbrella of of, of the the register in open air we, it's possible also to update of course after you are part of the infrastructure uh, you can benefit from from all the provide service uh, and you have also a, a possibility to update information, basic information from the from the from you, 
the data source from repository, or, or uh, for example, update the, the OAIP image interfaces um, or some uh, kind of information uh, like logos or descriptions from your um, content provider. This is also available under this register uh, umbrella. The, the provide service, uh, of course, within this um, validator and registration service, of course, is related with uh, our policies. Be aware that uh, uh, our policies and our guidelines are available in our main portal, but I'll, you can also access them via uh, the, the open air portal. So please check the guidelines and check the content acquisition policy in order to understand um, uh, all the useful uh, and the needed information for you to register and to uh, comply. Um, then the broker service uh, already uh, well presented by Claudio. Uh, it's available in an area about enrichment, content enrichment. So we are delivering metadata events uh, that can be useful for the repository manager, for the end user to uh, use it in, in, in your own um, content provider. So this is available in the content in rich area where you uh, will have information, uh, metadata events to improve uh, your metadata. And we have different kinds of, of, of events and uh, we will have different uh, use cases that I will present um, in, in a minute uh, that people using the, the, the broker events. And the fourth area of, of, of functionalities and services available in the, in the dashboard there is the, the one related with the, the user statistics, where we can check views and downloads and, 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 and the numbers uh, from your specific repository um, uh, in, in open air, and you can, and you can um, get uh, the service and benefit from this aggregated environment. So like a kind of metrics hub that we, we provide to you. Dimitris will detail this in, in, some, in some minutes. So to finish, uh, just some highlights. Um, so the service is available in provide.openair.eu. And of course, you can access and know everything about the service um, uh, connecting to this page. Uh, you can also log in and uh, have some more details about the, um, the provide. Of course, you uh, only if you have um, a content provider, uh, a data source that you manage, uh, you have access to these different functionalities. Okay, You can log in, you will see useful information about the service, but you don't see information about your data source, only if you are the manager. Of, of your service. If you, are, if you think that you are the manager of a service and if you don't see that information, just contact us because there's something wrong with your login or you are accessing the, the provide with a, a different login that in fact is not the login associated to the admin rights of your um, content provider. Uh, it's important to say uh, this is something that we, I think we have put a lot of effort uh, for sure it's not perfect, but we have put a lot of effort that the, this current version of the provider, the, the version that we have um, released in, in early May this year, is a result of a participatory process, uh, several uh, interactions. So we did um, three, four workshops where we did demos and we collect feedback from, from end users. Some also webinars. Uh, and uh, uh, after we released this version, in fact, uh, we did some more user tests to check some of the functionalities. We are quite happy with several components of this dashboard. Uh, not completely <laughs> happy with uh, one or two things that uh, should be improved, uh, but um, this is life. Life is not perfect. And also the service is not perfect, but we are quite happy with uh, what we have and the way that we have improved in this participatory. So. Here I have some print screens from some of the user tests that we, we did with several um, uh, repositories from different countries. Um, here are represented from Italy, Spain, and, uh, and Turkey, for example. And um, we were 
quite happy with the, the results. Uh, because I think the dashboard itself now, it's much more closer to the user needs. It's much more a dashboard environment and we, and, and, and for that we are, um, we are quite happy. Um, and uh, just some highlights. So here you see the different uh, components uh, where you see in the register and the validator and the not notifications in the left side of the, of the screen to benefit from the registration service and the validator. Notifications are related with the broker. So if you subscribe to specific metadata events, you will receive monthly, in a monthly basis, the, the notifications. Uh, then you can update here in the in the center of the screen. You have update, aggregation history, enrichment, and user statistics are the tabs where you can interact with the different components of this of this dashboard. So the aggregation history is something quite important. We are not completely happy with the way that we are communicating with end users, but um, but for sure this is something that um, users are requested a lot in order to understand when was the last time that OpenAir have aggregated content from their repository, um, from which date the, they have the content available in production in OpenAir, what, when was the last time that the content was indexed, uh, etc. And everything is available in this aggregation history. Uh, and this is something that provides more transparency to the to the open air infrastructure. That is, it's complex and it's uh, becoming more and more complex due to the expansion of the graph. But we need to communicate straightforward to the to the um, to those that are contributing to the to, to the infrastructure. And then those that are contributing can benefit in this tab of the enrichment and this tab of the user statistics, where we you have the metadata enrichment events and the user statistics um, numbers where you can uh, benefit from these um, two services. To finalize, uh, some examples. Uh, we try to have different calls, the community calls that I have already invited you um, in the beginning of this session to participate. Um, we try to have uh, different uh, to present different use cases. Uh, I think uh, we have we had already several, but we have done five highlights at least um, to repositories from Italy, Serbia, Portugal, uh, journals, and uh, and also Spain. Um, uh, two highlights, um, for example, uh, repository from the uh, university uh, from Trieste that is using their this space crease repository to uh, improve their uh, interoperability quality using our validator but uh, they are improving a lot the metadata quality using uh, the broker events they use the enrichments related with um, open access versions that we are suggesting to them they are using the PIDs events that we are suggesting to them. They are using the, 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 for example, the abstracts that we are sending them. So these are some examples that our colleague Jordan from University of Trieste presented in one of the community calls we did uh, this year. Also, uh, my colleague Ricardo here from the University of Minho, that is the manager of this important repository in Portugal, is using a lot the broker service to uh, improve um, uh, the metadata when it comes to related with the um, links to projects. So uh, all the links related with the, the Portuguese funder and the European frameworks like um, Horizon 2020 and FP7 are um, uh, improved in our metadata uh, as a result from the metadata enrichment events that we are sending back to Ricardo as a repository manager of this. And the same is happening in several Portuguese repositories. Uh, then uh, also uh, when it comes into registered validation enrichment, um, the network of repositories in Serbia is all, all those repositories, uh, all these 16 repositories uh, that from Serbia are using the, the, the registration and the metadata and the, the validator service. Um, and it, it was quite helpful for their um, quality of, of, of metadata and also for the improvement, for the enrichment of their 
uh, records as um, as as uh, um, our colleagues from Serbia have presented, and then it's it's useful also for journals, for open access journals from different universities, also to become part of open air and to become and to provide more visibility and uh, um, and for them to to improve a bit their metadata uh, um, metadata uh, specifications uh, from the, the the journals. So different use cases that are being presented and. Um, and in, in some countries, there are in, in an interesting way to participate. There are lots of uh, um, developments and, and, and recent initiatives where they invite people from open air to to, exp, to better present the provide. And as an example of these recent initiatives at the national level, is this um, this um, activity that uh, uh, our colleagues in Spain uh, from the network of um, of libraries in Spain are organizing a session on the 29th of October. In fact, uh, uh, dedicated only to provide, it's a, a workshop um, from the repositories of this uh, network of, of, of libraries, where they call it three experiences, if I translate directly from Spanish to English. So three use cases using the, the open air provide service. And they will have the University of um, of a Polytechnic from Valencia to present a broker uh, use case. Anna Poveda from Universidad uh, Carlos III, I'm not sure if, he, if she's here with us, and they will present the way that they are using user accounts. Uh, uh, Antoni Prieto from Polytechnic from Catalonia, they will present the way that they are using the, the APIs and the, and the graph to enrich their content and, for example, to check duplicates in their repositories, based on the on our on our uh, bulk content. So these are three m different use cases that, in fact, will be presented in the community a national effort that these colleagues from Spain are doing. We are happy to support if you want to do similar things in your countries. I think these are great examples that I would like to share, and thank you for those colleagues from Spain to organize this. So. It's all from my side. Uh, I, I'm, I'm happy to answer questions. I will check later here in the chat, but I invite now Dimitris to, to do mm, the presentation of one of the services that we have in Provide, that is the users count, uh, counts service. So Dimitris, uh, you can share your screen. In the, the yeah, I'm trying. Sorry, I'm trying to share my screen. So let me check uh, if I can help so I can uh, open the slides for you, Dimit Dimitris, you can... Uh... Um, if you cannot manage to present, sometimes there are some issues. I can uh, I can open the slides. I think can can Dimitris sing, Dimitris. Let me check. Uh, let's give uh, ten uh... seconds more. If you if you cannot do it, I will open the slides and uh, and share the screen with you. Dimitris. So Dimitris is not here. I see I see him removed. Okay, uh, okay now the now the microphone is there, Dimitris. Can you try to say something? Yeah, sorry, sorry okay, about that. Now I, yeah. Works. Sorry about that. I had to share my screen to restart my PC to my uh, the zoom up to share my screen. So um can you share my screen now? Yes, 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 you, you can. Can you see it? Yes, perfect. I, I, okay. I can see. Okay. Thank you. So you can start the presentation. You can, okay, present. Yes, present mode. Perfect. Okay. Okay, thank you. So uh, thank you, Peter, and sorry for the inconvenience. 
Uh, I will try to give a brief overview of uh, the Open Air um, uh, Use Account Service, which is a part of the uh, services offered by Provide and discussed previously by uh, Pedro. Um, in this uh, overview, I will try to uh, give an introduction to the service, uh, what this service is about, uh, who is it for, how can you benefit uh, by using the service, uh, uh, how can you participate and uh, join the service, and most importantly, what results um, you can get by using the service and how can you, you get um, uh, these results. So what is uh, the use of account service in, uh, inside the open air uh, infrastructure? Um, in, um, the open air in this infrastructure, we have uh, the con providers, uh, the institutional repository, the aggregators, the, uh, the software repositories, which uh, Claudio mentioned uh, in his presentation, uh, that provide content to open air. This content uh, is uh, mined, harvested, and uh, duplicated in order to produce um, the open uh, uh, research graph which includes all the research products, for example, publications, software, etc. The usage count service links the usage events to these research products. And by linking, we simply, we mean simply counting these usage event, events as they occur in data, uh, in data sources. And these usage events are views and downloads for each uh, research uh, product. And these usage events are collected are aggregated, uh, are analyzed, and we produce, we finally produce um, statistics and we deliver, uh, in order to deliver standard activity reports about uh, research usage. So um, this is more or less uh, the usage counts uh, service inside the, the open air uh, infrastructure. And how do we do it? Uh, um, this is, um, we have followed two uh, uh, approaches, two uh, different workflows for your workflows for usage counts. The first workflow, a workflow is named uh, push, uh, which is used to collect uh, usage events, views and download directly from data sources. We uh, co uh, collect them, we process them uh, using some standard rules, which are provided by uh, the counter uh, code of practice directive. And these rules allow us to remove uh, for example, duplicate records or non-legitimate traffic uh, like robots or spiders. And we collect these events to our uh, user statistics uh, uh, database. And the, the second approach is named the pool approach where we um, collect um, counter reports from uh, national uh, aggregators, for example, uh, uh, IROS UK. Uh, we store these uh, um, reports in our uh, user database and we um, publish them either in uh, uh, open air interfaces like explore or uh, provide, or we can uh, uh, deploy them via the, uh, an API endpoint which follows um, the SUSHI light uh, protocol. So what are the main future of this uh, service, the user count service? First, we, as we mentioned, we track views and downloads via uh, the push approach, or we collect counter reports using the pull-up approach. We support IP anonymization in order to offer a kind of um, uh, data privacy. One important thing is that um, we exploit metadata duplication that enables the accumulation of views and downloads for same documents. What uh, practically means is that if we have an item which has, uh, which, for which we have collected usage activity uh, in many repositories, then we can have um, uh, uh, usage events, usage statistics from different repositories. And uh, we the, the usage count service supports uh, the counter code of practice. It's compatible with, the, with counter code of practice uh, release four. Uh, and we uh, will develop in the future the uh, uh, compatibility to uh, counter code of practice release five. And uh, this compatibility allows to produce standard-based user statistics. And uh, uh, most importantly, it enables the compare, uh, to compare uh, our statistics, our user statistics with statistics uh, from other uh, data sources. So to recap, the usage counts, what is the usage count service? Since everything counts in large amounts. So, Usage counts is a measure of scholar impact. It provides indicators that complements other biometric indicators like uh, uh, citations in order to offer a comprehensive and more um, recent view of the impact of academic resources. 
who can benefit from the service? Who are the stakeholders of the service? Um, authors, institutions, open science platforms, funders, etc., can use the service, can exploit the uh, usage count service, and uh, uh, answer questions like which funder has the biggest engagement in Europe based on uh, uh, the usage activity, or provide me the evolution of the popularity of the publication of a project within the last five years. And we can use the service to build inference or prediction model for topics based on the user's activity. We can create user communities, a group of people with, with, uh, with share common uh, preferences and make recommendations. And of course, we are provide, uh, as we mentioned before, you, uh, via the counter code of practice directive, uh, the required standardization. How can you uh, use the service? How can uh, uh, join the service? Of, uh, as Pedro mentioned, you can join the service by the registration of the provider's uh, dashboard. From there, you can find all the required uh, information and the, and the steps that are needed to be performed in order to join the service. For example, you have to download the software, uh, the, the required software for your repository. You have to configure the tracking code, uh, deploy uh, the software. And from our side, the open air side, we will validate the installation uh, of, a, of a software and we will inform you accordingly in order to, to be able to, you, to view your um, user statistics. Uh, for now, we offer uh, uh, software for, um, for this space from uh, version 4 to version 6 uh, uh, as, an, as a patch for uh, these uh, uh, versions. Uh, we offer a plugin for version 3 for reprints, and most importantly, we offer a Python script for all other, for all other platforms, uh, including, of course, this space and the prints that can be used independently of the uh, repository platform in, uh, and it can be installed um, uh, with our help if, if it's needed to send the uh, usage events to uh, open a uh, usage count service. Um, some uh, sample numbers, you can see the evolution of uh, open air uh, usage count service from 2016 till, uh, till September. Uh, 2020, you can see the views and uploads that have been uh, collected and aggregated. And you can also have um, an, uh, indication, uh, an indicator of the open air downloads for um, the, the various for funders uh, uh, in, uh, in Europe. And you can see how this uh, information, how uh, the information that we collect can be uh, exploited uh, for, by this particular uh, stakeholder. Uh, you have seen this um, uh, slide in uh, um, Pedro's pe uh, presentation. You can. Uh, this is uh, the usage counts. Um, uh, usage accounts uh, in action. Uh, uh, the usage statistics, which are uh, published in a particular repository, uh, uh, University of uh, of, of Minho. You can see the number of users and the number of downloads that have been collected uh, across the uh, year. And uh, you can also uh, use um, this interface, this interface from the provide to retrieve uh, more customized reports, for example, article reports uh, during a certain period of time. Um, you can also uh, uh, download the uh, usage reports using our uh, SUSI Lite uh, endpoint. We support counter uh, code of practice uh, release for compatible reports. And uh, we offer article reports, book reports, uh, repository reports, or uh, 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 journal reports, apart from, uh, and of course, uh, uh, item reports. Uh, this is an example of, um, of the report that you, are, that you could get uh, using our endpoint. Uh, and uh, this is in, uh, in the SUSI Lite uh, format that, uh, uh, that I mentioned before. And uh, on the left hand is the repository report, and on the right side is the uh, item report. Um, recently, we have deployed a new kid in town. It's our uh, uh, usage counts open air uh, portal, which provides information about the usage count service. It includes uh, the various resources, it includes uh, a set of analytics that are. Um, involved every day. Uh, uh, we have a, a contact form where we can ask uh, anything you want about the service. And uh, uh, we have um, information about uh, the architecture and the um, structure of, uh, of, uh, of the service. You can uh, um, go there by using the usagecounts.openair.eu uh, link. 
Uh, in this portal, you can see a number of analytics like the, the, the current status of the um, uh, results that we have, that the use of uh, data that we have collected. We have 200 repositories, 100 million views and 300, uh, around 300 million downloads. And you can also search for a particular country to view the statistics the usage activity for a particular country. For example, for Portugal, we can see that we have 35 repositories, 27 million uh, views and 40 million uh, um, um, downloads. All this information is provided in, uh, in this uh, new portal, the usage counts portal. And uh, as mentioned, uh, we will add more and more analytics uh, there. Um, in the future, we will uh, 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 update our infrastructure, we will try to uh, build uh, the service in a more robust uh, uh, infrastructure and we will uh, uh, offer the service in, uh, in uh, a new um, backend that it will be uh, that will have a better performance and will be more um, uh, stable. This is the usage account service team. Uh, apart from me is uh, Andreas and Joachim from University of Bielefeld and uh, my colleagues from Athena uh, Research Center, uh, Adonis and uh, Lebesis and Spiros uh, uh, Zupanos. So this is uh, all from me. Uh, thank you. And if you have any questions, I'll be available to answer. Okay, many thanks, Dimitri. So um, before we move to the last topic of this session, uh, feel free to, to ask questions. Uh, I saw already some questions and in fact uh, provided already some answers. We can also um, answer um, directly in the text if you have questions um, later to put uh, to Dimitris. Uh, I would like to highlight um, one of the questions that uh, that in fact is being also discussed here in the chat, which is good, which is great. Lontar also reacted to Ellie from the Netherlands, uh, um, so questioned uh, regarding the um, the um, the Narcissus. So it's important to and and I would like just to dedicate uh, fifteen seconds to that. So it's important to say that um, when open air collects uh, content from um, national aggregators, from for example uh, European uh, national aggregators, and we have the content from the from a specific repository from a specific country uh, in open air infrastructure via an aggregator. Unfortunately, currently we don't have a way to provide. Uh, an individual access to the repository managers in the dashboard okay this is in the pipeline we had a uh, this is one of our priorities in provide um, just to make sure unfortunately uh, the priorities uh, so um, we cannot achieve uh, uh, sometimes what we have on the top uh, three priorities because we have the priority that uh, um, uh, don't allow us to progress in other things so the priority was the graph expansion uh, it's solved now uh, now we can move to three or other priorities and i think we can move to this one the way that we solve the, the, the technical limitation is like lontaro said in the chat so it's is similar to the approach that we did for la referencia uh, repositories but that we can manage. That the, the, now we what we need to improve is in the also in the in the front end, and to create some um, some uh, um, uh, to consume some information from the data source manager in internally in the back end of OpenAir. So if Claudio have some additional information about that, you can you can uh, say it. Uh, if not, this is a kind of, um, it's a, it's a commitment from the technical team. It's a commitment. It's a personal commitment that in order that we will have it in the coming months before the end of the project for sure. But in the coming, in the coming, uh, two or three months for sure, we will have this available, uh, to support not only Narcis, but other, um, national aggregators. Okay. Repositories. Then the, I know that the Dutch repositories are, um, asking for this, since the first time that we present um, uh, the dashboard. Every time that we present the, 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 the dashboard, um, Dutch repository managers 
uh, ask for this. Okay, I am aware of that. So, Ellie, thank you for your question, and uh, this was a possibility for me to um, to um, clarify this. Pedro, uh, if, yes. if, may, if may I, I would uh, stress what uh, Lautaro already replied in the chat. Perhaps a uh, path to proceed is to exploit what we did for uh, the referencia, essentially asking uh, aggregators to include uh, the open door identifier of the original repositories being aggregated by an aggregator so that on the opener side, we can recognize uh, which the, reposit the original repository is. In this way, we can, uh, for example, generate events directly for individual repositories in the broker. Yeah, true. Uh, this is the, the important information for all. Uh, uh, sorry, I know. sorry, Pedro. Uh, just one, one, one uh, as Claudio said, if, if it's useful what we did for La Referencia, we can share uh, the way that we did because Opener is is already prepared to proce or to process the, those uh, those additional metadata records. So if it's useful for for other content providers, we will be happy to to share yeah. Uh, yeah. the process. Yeah, thank you very much. This is quite important for other uh, aggregators, and we will work with you to to put it in the support uh, materials that we have and provide. But uh, uh, as we did already some work specifically for Narcis, uh, so I know that some we did some progress. So this is not the this is not the case. This is the Narcis is waiting for analysis repositories are waiting for the, the other part. So the, the way that we can uh, in fact put it in production in the, in provide in order for a repository manager have access. They have already done some work. But thank you for for, for your clarification, Lontaro and uh, Claudio. That, let's move. So Dimitris can reply to questions here directly in the chat. Uh, Andreas, um, let's move to the third part of our uh, session dedicated to interoperability guidelines i'm waiting to andreas to connect and uh, to take the floor uh, so where we are discussing the interoperability uh, guidelines and to provide some uh, updates um, and to have three presentations so the floor is yours to manage this third part of the session thank you thank you pedro and uh, thank you also uh, welcome to the last block of uh, this session. So I'm happy um, to have with me Gabriela from Canada and Jan from Czech Republic. And I was very delighted to that you present uh, part of the guidelines today here. Um, uh, in the first, um, Peter mentioned here the agenda. We start with um, fundamental of uh, MEA guidelines, um, uh, briefly overview about, uh, about the guidelines, and then follow with uh, the presentation from uh, Gabriela and uh, from Jan. And after this, we can answer uh, questions if you have. We start with the uh, fundamental of the open air guidelines. Uh, the guidelines have um, uh, researchers in, in in the middle and uh, see the researchers and what uh, have the researchers as output. And from this point of view, um, the researchers have a literature published uh, article in thematic repositories and in institutional repositories and also can uh, uh, publish these in, in journals. The researcher has mostly all research data that can also be published today uh, in data repositories or uh, named catch all repositories, but also in their own institution and or thematic repositories for uh, the specific fields. Then, uh, mostly the research use and develop uh, um, software. And this software can uh, published in software repositories, um, especially in, in institutions or GitHub or whatever. And also catch all this uh, <laughs> for all kinds of uh, research products uh, available. Um, 
he can also publish other research things. Um, and this could be um, different kind of things that we uh, can have it here. Um, and last but not least is uh, the researchers have some information about his uh, research project. So project identifier uh, from uh, pro um, the project is funded by funders of um, uh, the project. Uh, the re researcher is uh, related to an organization and so on. And this could be found in career systems, current research information systems. Um, so the landscape of a repository types are uh, similar to what we saw before. We have an institutional um, and publication repositories. We have journals, we have data repositories, software, other products um, that uh, have it. And here, um, what coming up in the, in the near future and the most uh, institutions the moment, that's our uh, CRIS systems. These, in these repositories, we find uh, different types of resources. In literature, um, we find uh, articles, preprints, we find data sets, so we have collections, clinical trials, and software and so on. It's especially to say that um, we have uh, for the projects and funders, and uh, also um, different uh, resource types that come up in the future. So these types can found in institutional repositories, um, in the data, the CRIS has mostly all of these types of uh, um, of this, these resources and the other uh, things our data repositories can have data sets in literature, uh, journals are mostly in articles, um, software and software repositories and so on. This is an overview about uh, the repository types that we have and the resource types. Um, that uh, are presented in these kinds of repositories. And um, the objective here for the OpenAI guidelines is that we have uh, these guidelines for all these kinds of uh, repo um, resource types and re uh, repository types, and um, is to improve the interoperability of the metadata to exchange these information uh, not only with um, open air, so all, uh, also to uh, third parties. And it supports the FAIR principles to um, it's findable, accessible, um, interoperable, and is reusable. And with, uh, with these kinds, it's also uh, repeatable by other researchers if it have uh, these kinds. So, um, for the guidelines using uh, existing standards or reusing existing standards like Dublin Core and DataSide, and uh, the guidelines are reusing also um, vocabularies and uh, some extension if necessary. Um, also to reuse uh, persistent identifier and different types and uh, you have different uh, persistent identifier in different regions. Come we to the evolution of the guidelines. Uh, since 10 years ago, this uh, the first guideline version was published at uh, 2010. Let's uh, focus the literature repositories that are mostly um, released or published in these uh, in these uh, years of uh, 2010s. 
and uh, we see that are come uh, more different repositories up what I say data. it's a special repository for data and for literature and we see in the next coming years um, that we have uh, the representative of all these repositories Um, in 2018, in the end of 2018, uh, we have the last uh, major releases of the uh, literature guidelines. It's called now uh, Institutional and Thematic Guidelines, version 4. Um, and um, we have also um, a switch in the content acquisition policy of open air. In from beginning from 2010 uh, until 2018, uh, the content acquisition policy um, focused only for open access um, articles, open access data, and so on. Since the new content acquisition policy. Uh, we can harvesting all, not only the open content, also the closed content and the metadata for the closed content. This was a major shift from the open to closed to get a better um, view of the uh, transformation here. And we are um, now in 2020, and we are in the next round of updating the guidelines, um, especially uh, the data archive guidelines, uh, software and other research products, but also Chris, in a perspective of um, more fundamental guidelines. And uh, with a fundamental um, basis here and uh, with uh, perspective of uh, EOSC and European, uh, European Open Science Cloud. The last slides shows uh, the different kinds of um, guidelines here, what you see at, in the Open Air Guideline um, portal that we have and um, that you find there the different types of uh, the guidelines that are here published. And with this, I would like to uh, give the floor to Gabriela. That's uh, very excited to have some uh, implementation and experience with the guidelines, especially for the data or the institutional and thematic guidelines. Um, and after Gabriela, Jan will present um, the, especially the Chris guidelines. Gabriela, the floor is yours. Thank you. Yours. Can you see my slides? Yes. Thank you. Um, hello. Uh, thank you very much, Andreas, for the introduction. I'm Gabriela Mircea. I'm the Digital Repository Librarian at McMaster University Library, and I will present the Open Air Compliant Canadian Aggregator Canada research. <clears throat> to put the project in context, I want to quickly mention uh, the project stakeholders. We have the Canadian Association of Research Libraries, Open Repository Working Group, which works in collaboration with the Canadian Repository Community and it was assembled by CARL's Advancing uh, Research Committee. And we, have, we also have the uh, Canada's three major funding agencies, Canadian Institutes of Health Research, National, uh, sorry, Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council of Canada and Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council of Canada, which are interested in tracking their funded projects. I'm a member of the Open Repositories Working Group and what the Open Repository Working Group is hoping to uh, do is to get Canadian COVID-19 related research into the open air infrastructure. We decided to start with the institutional repositories 
the Canadian Institutional Repositories landscape, which is about 85 um, repositories, is a mixture of different platforms. And unfortunately, the majority of them are not open air compliant. The ultimate objective is to have all Canadian institutional repositories compliant with open air guidelines for literature repositories and take full advantage of the open air benefits. But the effort required to do this means that many institutions will not do it. It is a big uh, commitment and many libraries do not recognize the benefits or do not have the necessary resources to allocate. So I proposed uh, building a national aggregator to bring together research outputs from Canadian institutional repository so that it can then be made available through international discovery services. McMaster University built an infrastructure to support the national Canada research aggregator Canada research not only solves the technical problems around, around open air compliance, but having a national aggregation will enhance access to COVID-19 research and to Canadian research activities in general. The aggregator is based on DSpace. DSpace has the capacity to harvest other repositories and versions five and six of DSpace can be made compliant with the open air guidelines for literature repositories version four. Thanks to the work funded by several Canadian research libraries and undertaken by For Science. So, we have launched a national aggregator that will transform metadata basically. Canada Research is now live, and once the records are harvested by Canada Research, the local repository managers are strongly encouraged to curate the metadata in the central aggregator in order to add granular funding information in compliance with open air guidelines. We suggest adding funder identifier, funder name, funder grant and award URI. And the pros for this approach, uh, having the institutional repository manager edit the records at the aggregation level is that it allows for uh, granular funding information. Um, the downside of that is that if the Canada Research Project comes to an end, then all the enhanced metadata may be lost, although we could offer an export back to the original repositories. So far, we successfully harvested test records from several institutional repositories using the following platforms. For DSpace, uh, we use the DSpace intermediary format, which gives us quite a bit of granularity. Um, and then for ePrints, ContentDM, Islandora, and two custom IRs, we use um, a simple doubling core to harvest the data. And we also managed to register with OpenAir. We are now several months into the project. And during this time, we came across several issues, in particular, of course, with metadata. We looked specifically at the uh, DC description sponsorship and DC contributor fields because these fields are more likely to contain funder name or funder ID, grant or uh, project name or number. So for DSpace based institutional repositories, because we use the DSpace intermediary format to harvest the metadata, <clears throat> and with that we get more granularity, uh, funding information for from DC description sponsorship field uh, can be mapped directly to open air funder name in open air. And then funder information that's coming from DC contributor field uh, can be mapped to data site contributor in open air. <clears throat> because for other platforms, we can only get simple Dublin core then the DC description sponsorship becomes DC description and funding information from DC description field will then be mapped to DC description in open air. Then DC contributor author becomes DC creator and all the other contributors, um, which can be the thesis advisor and, and so on, they all become DC contributor, which then we map to data side uh, contributor uh, with the contributor type other. <clears throat> also, when we harvest um, unqualifying Dublin Core metadata, 
all the fields, all, all the information from the DC relation, which can be um, has part, has version, is based on, and so on, um, ends up in the DC relation field. <clears throat> and because open air, <clears throat> the, um, sorry, the version of the space which supports open open air uh, version four uses DC relation to store the award title information. All that information from DC relation ends up in open air, open air award title, which is um, less than, than ideal because DC relation can be used for uh, uh, can be used as a catch all for all references related to other items, which uh, could be URLs to other resources, sometimes references and lots of references, they all end up in the award title field in um, when we crosswalk to open air. <clears throat> also, uh, we identified some issues around the dates. Um, they come in all um, uh, types of, um, in many forms. As you can see, I have here only three examples, but uh, there's more. And we, we don't do any transformation uh, for the date field. We just pass it on to open air. We also may run into the situation where we have multiple DC dates and only one of them is the publication date. The others can be the embargo date, can be access um, the available date or creation date and so and so on. So we have to, to sort through um, through that. And this is an example of a record from Canada Research in open air. You can see here on the right hand side, the date for this is um, 2020, the year for this is 2020, but the um, article was actually published in 2017. So we have to investigate, go back to the provider, investigate where, where that, that information was um, missed. We're currently working on providing the affiliation information <clears throat> to open air, and I was glad to hear the, uh, the discussions um, around that. And this is this brings me to the end of my my slides, and I want to thank you all for listening. Thank you, Gabriela. Uh, very interesting. So to see how you integrate uh, the literature guidelines into your aggregator. So thank you very much um, for discussion. I think it's uh, we have time uh, after the next presentation. Um, Jan, should I share my screen or do you Can like you please to share? share the presentation? That would be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello, I'm Jan Dvořák. Uh, I am representing Eurocris here. I'll come to that a bit later. But let's start with uh, the next slide, please. Uh, which um, basically brings us to the um, fundamental question of what encompasses uh, research information? What's the content of that uh, concept? Uh, in Eurochris, we see three main categories for research uh, information. It represents uh, actors in research which obviously are the researchers but also organizations of various types. Then it's the research process where the research projects uh, play the, the main role, but you also have funding, research infrastructures and uh, communication events in, in that scope. And then the, um, the typical suspect, the research outputs, uh, research results. So the publications, research data sets, research software, patents, but also you can register outcomes and impacts of research. Uh, the main point is that uh, all of these objects here are heavily interlinked and uh, everything exists in a rich context. Well, the, the, the open air, research graph is actually demonstrating that extremely well, I think. 
The next slide, please, Andreas. Yes, so this in research information is typically found in uh, research information systems or current research information systems. That's where the, um, abbre uh, the um, abbreviation CRIS stands for. And these systems basically register and document research. That's right. But from different perspectives, it can be research done in an institution in which case we are speaking of an institutional CRIS, but it could also be research funded by a funder or research done using a, a specific research infrastructure or research done in a territory where we also can see quite many national or regional CRISs out there. Speaking of current research, that means not just the research that is being currently performed, but it's also past research that is now relevant, or it can be research that is currently planned. Um, in the US, you can find these systems under another acronym, RIMS, Research Information Management Systems. Next slide, please, Andreas. Yes, uh, Eurocris, which I'm representing here, is an association of uh, research information management professionals from Europe, but also the rest of the world. Our main product and standard here is uh, Serif, the common European research information format, which is the comprehensive information model for the domain of scientific research. And it's intended to support the interchange of research information between and with CRISIS. Yes, uh, the next slide. So the CRISIS, uh, at Eurocris, we run uh, DRIS, the Directory of Research Information Systems. Uh, and you see we got over 750 systems registered and that is still a fraction of what is out there. So we'll be continuing in, those, in that effort and also making it available to open air and other interested parties through an API similar to the door, open door. Um, next slide, please. Yes, and to support the interchange between CRISIS and OpenAir, we developed a, a profile, a subset of Serif to um, carry all this information. And here you can see the quite rich scope of that information that is being transferred. It um, certainly involves the uh, research outputs, the publications, products, and patents. But it also involves the context entities for that, which uh, are the projects and funding, but also infrastructure uh, information, such as equipment and services, and uh, also the researchers as persons or, or organizations, so the institutions, funders or research facility operators. And we can also record and transmit the information on the organizational structure, which is you know, quite valuable. Technically speaking, the communication happens under the, mm -hmm. under the, um, the uh, typical protocol OAIPMH 2.0 with the exception that the payload is another kind of XML. It's uh, the so-called serif XML. So that's the main difference in comparison to the other guidelines that you would meet. Next slide, please, Andreas. Yes. So here, uh, this is what we got in beta explore openair.eu. That's the list of uh, content providers that use these guidelines. It's uh, 11 of them currently. 
and uh, from quite uh, a couple of countries, as you can see. And they involve both institutional crises and national aggregators. So this is currently in beta. Hopefully we get it to production soon. Yes, uh, three cases uh, that I would like to mention specifically, three different CRIS platforms that have support for these guideline, guidelines built in. One of them is the Space CRIS, has been mentioned quite a couple of times already. It's an open source software CRIS implementation. It's based on DSpace, but it is extended with the entities that uh, hold the context of the items there. The main developer and service provider here is for science. Uh, another implementation of the guidelines is in Pure, which is a very successful commercial CRIS offering uh, by Elsevier. It was developed by a small uh, company in, uh, in Denmark, now part of Elsevier. And the third example I would like to bring up is uh, Omega Psir, an offering by the Warsaw University of Technology. So it's uh, mm, so it's uh, focused a little bit on the Polish context uh, and Polish institutions, uh, but it's also um, quite a valuable contribution to the uh, open air guidelines landscape. Uh, then there are also in-house built institutional crises and the national aggregators, namely Narcis for Netherlands and um, Verta for Finland. And from what we hear, there will be other crises to follow. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, so we are looking for uh, content providers of other types as well. So specifically for content providers among funders, where these open air guidelines for Chris managers can be used to to communicate structured information about funding um, at the level of funding programs and calls, but also on the individual project funding, all that fits in, in, the, uh, in the format as well. And for infrastructure operators, it might be interesting to provide the other part of context, which is information about equipment So these are the open air CRIS guidelines. Uh, thank you for your attention. I give the floor back to the word back to, to Andreas. Thank you, Jan. So <clears throat> uh, I would close uh, this block and we can open uh, after this uh, the question and answer. I would like to invite you um, all, uh, all of you to our uh, feedback documents that we have for data archive uh, guidelines, CRIS guidelines, um, and also it's not mentioned here, but I can uh, give the URLs to, to you for literature guidelines and so on. So if you see, we have an evolution of the guidelines uh, beginning if uh, the first guidelines published in 2010 um and we are on the next round uh, to uh, update these guidelines in for different ways that we see from the aggregator side of uh, canada um and talk about some issues here um so i would like to invite you all to give us feedback on these guidelines um and uh, in the in this time space uh, of 10 years uh, there are different versions of um, guidelines out there and for different platforms and there's also um, different repository platforms out there there's uh, as jan mentioned here uh, dspace um, can we mentioned 
ePrints, um, there's Pure and a lot of more repository platform applications out there. And uh, over the time, there are different versions. So uh, we start to create a um, spreadsheet. It's an open spreadsheet for comment also um, that are uh, refers to the different version um, of repository platforms and this versions, and also um, to the versions of the guidelines. Uh, so which guide, uh, which repository platform and version supports which guideline versions. That's the idea behind. Uh, we will share this, uh, the link uh, in a minute also in the chat. And I would like to close here and thank you again, uh, Gabriela and Jan, and give the floor back to Pedro. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I will also ask Jan, because there is a question here, you can ask directly in the chat. Uh, please, uh, Jan, if you can go to the Q&A and you can directly uh, reply. So there was, we already replied, I think, mm -hmm. uh, all thank questions you. directly in the in the in the chat. Uh, so thank you for all the all the interesting questions and, uh, and thank you for the um, this uh, great session. So long session. Um, so we are coming to the end. It's in it's the end. Two hours after. Uh, thank you very much for joining this session. Uh, so. Um, as you can see, there are lots of uh, uh, interest for for for, for these um, services and for the different components of the service, and of course to interact with the open air infrastructure via the interoperability guidelines. So many thanks for joining, for participating. So thank you for the speakers. So many thanks for your contribution. Thank you, Jan and Gabriel. You were the, the the last one in the in the queue in this mm -hmm. in this program agenda. So many thanks for your uh, for your effort and to make it uh, in, interested. Uh, so recordings and um, and presentations uh, will be shared. I think some of them already shared here by the by the link. Um, become part of of Open Air for those that are not uh, and use our services. Provide us feedback uh, the different via the different means. Um, and uh, and uh, and also uh, participate every first Wednesday of the month at half past two in the in the open air community calls. We are just sharing the the link here. Please put in your calendars. We will send more information. Subscribe the newsletter. Many thanks for your participation here. Tomorrow we will have uh, uh, more uh, information. So we will have. Uh, um, Tomorrow we will have a session on uh, targeting researchers and the services and the RDM services that we have available for researchers. Please join at uh, two o'clock, uh, Open Air for Researchers and Beyond, uh, Open Air RDM Guides, Nodo, Amnesia, Argo. So be, uh, be aware of this session and uh, we look forward to see you uh, tomorrow also in the in this uh, in this um, in this fourth session of our open air week. Okay.